In the heated and deranged Middle East, there are only a few government regimes that are somewhat accountable to their people. In fact, despite being the wealthiest region, most Middle Eastern countries still lack development. Let's take a look at a case study that often gets ignored in the media. The Palestinian government. For years, Arabs living in the Mandate of Palestine were ruled by leadership selected by the British and the international community. Some of the early key figures include Haj Amin al-Husseini, Ahmed Hilmi Pasha, and Yasser Arafat. It was only in 1994 when the offshoot of the Palestinian Liberation Organization was established under the Oslo Accords. This was called the Palestinian Authority, which would become the new unity government. From then on, PLO head Yasser Arafat appointed President Mahmoud Abbas as the future leader of the Palestinian people. Many people under this rule criticized the decision by the accusation of corruption and political favoritism. But in 2004, Arafat died and tensions increased between rivaling parties. As a result, power was largely decentralized in the Palestinian territories, deepening political factions and militant conflicts. Such conflicts have made an indefinite situation for borders and governance among Palestinian people. Today, two major parties have achieved a divided political and military control of Palestinian life. The leading PA party Fatah and the militant Islamist party Hamas. In 2005, Abbas of the Fatah party secured his presidency by winning the PA presidential election. However, after a year of postponement, parliamentary elections took place and Hamas won the majority of seats by popular vote, just enough to take Fatah's upper hand in office. The situation unfolded in a power struggle, and after much conflict to create a uniform rule, the Palestinian territories became divided, with Hamas taking control of the Gaza Strip and Fatah keeping hold of the West Bank. From each territory, both parties governed independently, putting off any lasting peace agreements or formal cooperation. In the West Bank, Fatah appealed to their citizens by promising to govern with a focus on national liberation, secular principles, and union military dominance. And Hamas, by promising social programs, instituted Islamic values, and militaristic supremacy. However, if we look at the profiles of these party leaders, we can see what they've actually done for the Palestinian people. Under each of these politicians, Palestinians have become disempowered and disenfranchised. While being the highest recipient of foreign aid per capita in the world, the Palestinian standard of living has decreased with one of the highest unemployment rates and GDP per capita. With such a dysfunctional political system, how do the Palestinians know who to blame? And where could the rest of their money be going? In a series of intricate tactics, both Palestinian governments have shifted the blame and eliminated internal opposition through a recirculation of power by preaching regime dogma while gathering international support, then launching expansionist wars and terrorism from civilian centers, and after receiving the response, masquerading as the victim and blaming the other side for aggression. In an effort to convince the public of their pure morale, both governments persecute and suppress political dissidents, appealing to other countries for more aid to funnel more money into their own pockets and back into their militaristic framework. This recirculation of power is one of the most lucrative means for Palestinian leaders to stay on top, with almost no threat from the international community. Yet it only demonstrates the manipulation and neglect of their own people, creating suffering, distrust, and anger from within. While the corruption is still taking place among the Palestinian Authority and among the Palestinian leadership, that's the clear proof that there is no organization and there is no donors who are trying to create a kind of transparency 
for the funds that they are transferring to the Palestinian Authority. I think that we, the Palestinians, the corruption of our leadership almost eating us from within. I think that this is a, 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 a classic a Arab Muslim dictatorship. I think that the people are living under a kind of fear. I think that people are afraid to speak out. This is one of the severe violations of human rights that people has the freedom, the freedom of speech. Unfortunately, there is no freedom of speech under the Palestinian Authority. Or probably I can say the opposite. There is a huge freedom of speech under the Palestinian Authority, but unfortunately there is no freedoms after the speech. Will the Palestinian leadership ever be held accountable for their corruption? Will the international community wake up and change their policy towards the Palestinian regimes? Will those who have no voice be given their human rights? We only have the future to tell.